Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Bernie, here, bringing you yet another video here on The Charge, giving the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinions. And guys, before we get started on to today's video, talking about Jimmy Butler and his first day at practice with the Timberwolves, go and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, go and check out our awesome NBA content we have out here. We, of course, have the video talking about AD to Boston. Could it happen? There's rumors that Kyrie Irving's trying to recruit him. So go and check that video out as it is an interesting watch to listen to. But now let's talk about this Jimmy Butler thing because this thing is absolutely NBA gold. This is what the article goes on to say, and this is, of course, come from Adrian Wojnarowski. Jimmy Butler returns to practice, verbally challenges coaches and teammates. So let's see what this let's see what this article says, man. Jimmy Butler participated in the practice with the Minnesota Timberwolves on Wednesday and verbally challenged teammates, coaches, and the front office. Butler was reportedly boisterous and emotional at times in targeting Tom Thibodeau, Scott Layden, Carl Anthony Towns, and Andrew Wiggins. You bleep and need me. You can't win without me. Butler reported screaming at Layden. Butler requested a trade before the start of training camp, but the Wolves have been unable to find a trade to their satisfaction. And of course, there's rumors right now that Houston's trying to jump into this trade by trading away P.J. Tucker and Eric Gordon. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but let's talk about what just entailed in this practice. One, we know that Jimmy Butler's upset and he wants to get out of there. They've had numerous amount of beasts between Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, and Jimmy Butler. Those three guys just do not get along. Although we see the pictures of them being nice to each other and there's all other sorts of situations like that, what we see in real life and what we're hearing about is completely the exact opposite. We know that when Jimmy Butler requested a trade, Andrew Wiggins' brother said hallelujah, and Andrew Wiggins was all about it. Andrew Wiggins is delusional, and I talked about this in another video. Both Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins are delusional to think that their team is better without Jimmy Butler. But that's neither here nor there. Jimmy Butler is verbally upset. He's visibly upset. So why in the right mind, if I'm the Minnesota Timberwolves, I give him access to the gym but not during the times when Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, and the team is practicing. I'm sorry, that just can't be the case. If I'm a professional basketball team, I do not want any distractions coming up from my team, and that means limiting them as amount as possible. So that means Jimmy Butler, I'm sorry, you have to train on your own for now until they decide to clear out, and then you can come back and train later. Because I do not want them to interact with each other because you know that this would happen. If you're there with the front office, the coach, the players, Jimmy Butler doesn't want to see any of them. He wants to be on another team. He wants to be in Miami. He wants to be, well, maybe Houston. I'm not sure about Houston, but he wants to be in the LA. Whatever team is trying to trade for him, he's trying to go there because he's sick and tired of the Minnesota Timberwolves and their organization. Hell, I'd be sick too if Tom Thibodeau was making the player uh, personnel changes. Like, come on. This is the reason why, and I talked about this numerous times in different videos, this is why you can't have a coach also be player personnel. We see it not working in LA. We see it not working here in... Minnesota. So what other incentives do you need to say, all right, maybe we shouldn't give the coach also the direction to do player personnel because they obviously have too much on their plate to handle. That is what I'm talking about. You can't have that happen. And this is the exact result that you get. You get a guy that's a superstar who's just sick and tired of his teammates ragging on him, not putting in the time and effort to get better, but instead are playing Fortnite, instead are, you know, I'm Andrew Wiggins, I can be the number one option. No, that you can't do that. That's absolutely asinine and insane that they would allow this to happen. So Jimmy Butler, I understand your pain, understand your frustration, but there's also a side of that I'm also like, you know what, Jimmy, you probably need to be a little bit more professional, but I can also understand why you're upset because these guys have challenged you. These guys have been uh, going against you and what you're trying to do. So I can understand his side of the story as well, but I can also understand the organization side, but I'm gonna have to lean more on Jimmy Butler's side because you know that this would happen. You know what type of player Jimmy Butler is. He's an, he wears his emotions on his sleeves. So he's not going to be a guy that just holds it in, you know, a all lovey-dovey. He doesn't want that fake love. He's all about the smoke. He wants the smoke. So if I know that, why would I put them in the same room? I'm trying to avoid a PR disaster. I'm trying to avoid Tom Thibodeau talking about it. I'm I don't want to avoid any player on my team talking about this instant. I'm trying to get them to focus on, let's see what we can do for next season. That's what the focus should be on. And I feel like that's what's missing right now with the Minnesota Timberwolves. So let's move on to the trade that could happen. And that's, of course, Jimmy Butler to Houston for P.J. Tucker and Eric Gordon. As much as I like that better than the Miami Heat trade, which was Josh Richardson and a protected first round pick, I'm still a little bit kind of iffy on it. Because if you get rid of the bench players, I'm not exactly sure what the Houston Rockets are. I feel like they need their bench because that was their biggest strength going into the Warriors game. Yes, it was the iso ball. I was doing a lot of it, but I still think that the bench is strong. But if you get rid of that for Jimmy Butler, yes, you're on a competitive way 
can be somewhat comparable to the Golden State Warriors, but you just don't have a guy in Kevin Durant. You don't have a guy in Steph Curry. You need a lot more guys to do that. And by getting rid of two guys to get one, I'm not a fan of because your starting lineup would be Chris Paul, James Harden, Carmelo Anthony, Jimmy Butler, and Clint Capella, which would be a very fantastic lineup. I mean, I could see that being a very strong lineup, but at the same time, you need mentally tough guys, and that's, of course, P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker is going to be the, the bruiser for you. He's going to make sure that he protects guys like James Harden and Chris Paul and Jimmy Butler as well. He's going to get in people's faces, and you also need a guy in Eric Gordon who comes off the bench and gives you good scoring minutes. So in my opinion, I think it's a bad move. And if I'm any team trying to go for Jimmy Butler, I am waiting until the end of the year until you can sign him to a max contract. Because obviously the Rockets, I'm not sure what their contract situation is, but I don't think that they can re-sign Jimmy Butler for a max deal. So it's going to be interesting to see what goes on in this whole ordeal, this whole telenovela that is the Minnesota Timberwolves and Jimmy Butler, but seems to be on steroids with the way that we just got reports that he's yelling at the front office guys and also Carl Anthony Towns and Tom Thibodeau. If I'm him, I'm also yelling at those guys because I want to get the hell out of there. I don't want to stay in Minnesota where I'm treated like a nobody. Like, I'm not an important piece. I'm treated as a side chick. I'm not treated as the main, the main person, right? You want to be the main guy? I mean... In all honesty, he was the main guy. I mean, if without him getting injured, they probably would have, if he would have stayed healthy, they would have been in sixth or uh, fifth place in the West. But since he got injured, they all fell all the way down to eighth and could have been out of the playoffs altogether. So it's going to be a very interesting season to see what the Minnesota Timberwolves do. They start their games next week. We'll see if he's on the team or not. But there is ultimatums that Jimmy Butler put on the team, and that is, of course, to be traded by Friday. So in your guys' opinion, now that this is the end of the story, what do you guys think of this whole Jimmy Butler thing? Do you, Are you on the Jimmy Butler side or are you on the organization side? What do you guys think of this whole ordeal? Do you think of the three players who's the best one? What is going on in Minnesota? There were so many rambling questions that I just put out there, but see if you can answer one of them and that'd be great, guys. But anyway, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to hit that like button. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel so that way we get more people and eyes on the Fusion Corp channel. Anyway, guys, I'm going to catch you later in the next video. Peace.